In respect of the plea of necessity that you have heard Professor Schmidt refer to, you may recall that he mentioned that this right of response turned on a grave and imminent threat to an essential state interest. Moreover, that such a right could be exercised against both state and non-state actors. Key to this authority is that an essential state interest has been affected. While power sources and other infrastructure that significantly underpins normal daily life would be covered, it is less clear what else may be included. As a criteria necessary to be established before any response may be legitimately undertaken, it is important to understand the boundaries of essential state interests in this context. The matter is one that is subject to ongoing consideration by both experts and states in this dynamic area. The final issue to be canvassed in this outline of rights and obligations is when a cyber operation amounts to a violation of Article 2.4 of the Charter, namely a threat or use of force. The Nicaragua case previously mentioned had determined that the supply of arms and training to rebel groups within a sovereign state can constitute a violation of Article 2.4, thus giving rise to a right of countermeasures or potentially even a plea of necessity in response. How does this manifest in the cybersphere? When would a cyber operation amount to a breach of Article 2.4? Let's listen to what Professor Schmidt says on the issue. With regard to our use ad bellum and, and use in bello, there were a number of problems. With regard to, let's start with the uh, use ad bellum, there were two. Uh, they are the classic questions. What is a use of force uh, pursuant to Article 2.4 of the UN Charter? Because there's a prohibition on the use of force unless there's one of two exceptions. The Security Council approves the use of force, or alternatively, the use of force is an act of self-defense. So when is a cyber operation by one state against another state a use of force? We agreed that any time a state uses a cyber operation that causes physical damage or injury, that was a use of force. And it can only be justified by one of the two exceptions. However, in the very famous uh, Nicaragua case, the ICJ case, the 1986 case, uh, the ICJ held that you don't necessarily have to have forceful actions to trip over this, this wire. For example, if you arm and train guerrillas, that could be uh, a use of, you arm guerrillas and then train them to use weapons, that could be a use of force. We said, well, golly, that must apply in the cyber context as well. If I give guerrillas in another state malware and then train them how to use the malware, how is this different than arming and training guerrillas? So one of the problems we had in the, in the translation of the norm was when does a cyber operation trip over the use of force line such that it can only be justified by either a Security Council resolution or self-defense? We never solved that problem. This is, uh, we, we looked in there, in fact, it's, it's from some earlier writing, it's called the Schmidt analysis. What we said is we don't know where, the, until we see state practice, we don't know where that red line is. Where is that threshold?